G'day guys, welcome to the channel and we're back on the coop at long last. I know that some of you have probably been wondering what's been happening to the coop and yes there has been a little bit of work getting done on it in the background, not a great deal, some, just some small sort of fiddly things. Uh, but in the last week or so I really got stuck into it and uh, got to work doing panel alignment, a um, bit of uh, prep and, and prime and, and what have you and uh, I've sort of managed to get quite a bit done so I thought I'd make a video um, and yeah the introduction has been made after the work that was done so we're not going to walk around the car just yet I'll let you uh, get into the video and um, see some of the things that I've been getting up to with it and then at the end of the video we'll take a bit of a walk around it so I hope you enjoy <laughs> So what are we doing here today? Well, back on doors. More doors. I got the bug for doors, so I just thought I'll just do all the doors in the place. Yeah, so what I've got here is um, the passenger door for the coupe. And um, I've been doing uh, alignment and gaps. And what I found is when I had this in basically the, you know, the correct position for the car, she had a slightly bigger gap underneath between the edge, bottom edge of the door and the sill and it was quite a lot so I'm aiming for approximately 6mm all around the panels um, I sort of figured well if I aim for 6 then by the time you know it's paint and all the rest of it, it should be down around 5 or whatever and um, yeah so that's what I was doing I've got 6 at the front already but I had 10 at the back so it's obviously way too much so what I figured I'd do is I'd get some um, welding rod these are actually arc welding rods a uh, 3mm three, three arc welding rod and basically just you know hammered off all the flux and cleaned them up and because I sort of thought well that's probably probably about the right thickness and everything because you know you've got the two you've got the two folds and then you've got the, the frame in between so it's roughly you know 3mm of um, sheet metal so yeah so that's what I've done so I've um, got a gap of about a mil or so between the rod and the bottom edge and I've just been tacking up and then uh, just decreasing it as we go along so that's the hope um, that she and it, it'll, it'll be fine just gonna make sure I don't put too much heat in it but I'll weld that up I'll plenish it off I might put a bit of uh, blue dye on it that engineers dye and then I'll get my straight edge and I'll scribe a line straight through from zero to the bottom edge of that and then I'll know how far to trim this bottom part back to so um, and I'm also hoping that if I put some hot tacks here I won't have to weld both sides because there's a bit of a gap but up here I'll probably have to weld both sides because there's no gap so hopefully that makes sense to somebody <laughs> Yeah. I will let you get back to it. We'll get into it.
All right, so I thought I'd just show you guys um, what we're using for the doors on the coupe. So this uh, is actually the latch mechanism of the 2016 Mustang. And this is the outer door handle from uh, Aston Martin DB9. So um, what we've had to do is basically take the, the cable uh, from the Mustang and we've just um, had it altered. We've had the end changed so that we can adapt it to fit into this Aston Martin handle. And um, yeah, the, what I've found is the best way is to actually assemble the two together um, outside the door and then go ahead and place them, starting with the, this handle first, get it placed, and then that uh, latch. So we'll go ahead and um, we'll put her in. So the door is uh, still hasn't had any bodywork done to it, so you're going to see the remnants of uh, you know steel fabrication and what have you. So inside here, hopefully that shows up okay. Um, we made a uh, a system whereby the bolts that attach the uh, exterior door handle to the inside of the skin are removable. Um, that was actually an idea that X had uh, originally. Um, in case you know a bolt shared or you strip the thread or something like that so and we've got them sort of sitting in this little bit of tiny little bit of RHS which has been slotted out and that's that part of the um, the skin which the door handle well the opening is in that's actually two mil thick not you know 0.9 or 1 like the door skin so we had that uh, laser cut and the actual mounting points are actually welded to the two, two mil part of the skin Okay, one little job that I want to do on this thing is the is change the, the way I've got the back of that guard mounted. So at the moment, I've got three bolts, which are all sort of facing... Oh, you can't really see. Let me get a light. Okay, so I've got three bolts facing straight down. There's one there. Oh, there's one missing there. And then there's one right at the back near the door. So the one that's right at the back... It's just nigh near impossible to get it in, especially when the door's on. Um, yeah, it's just, to me, it's driven me nuts. So what I'm going to do is just change how it's mounted. And um, what I'll end up doing is I'm going to change it. So I have a little, oh, this is going to be hard. I have a little bracket coming off the side of the guard and then have it mounting flat to this surface of the A pillar so that I can basically just have a, a socket coming through that hole to bolt it on. Um, I didn't really want to do it that way uh, because it's going to be a little bit more obvious but believe me trying to take that thing on and off yeah it's just a pain in the neck there's just not enough room to get a socket in there and um, yeah so that's what we're going to do.
All right, guys, so we've got to that point now. We've got the car um, almost completely in primer. Uh, but uh, come and have a look around it and um, see how she looks. So um, we're at the stage where uh, this guard has been, it's all been prepped and, and primed, but there's no filler or anything in it. So you may, you may see some slight deviations, but there's, no, there's absolutely no filler in that guard. Um, the door here, we've got the mirror on temporarily and no it's not going to be painted that colour. Um, so just to, just to point something out, these, these mirrors here are not the Australian um, version that the Mustang, Mustangs here have. This is an American version, so they're slightly smaller. They don't, they're not quite as triangulated, so they're, quite, they're a, bit, a lot more streamlined. Um, we've also uh, got the door handles fitted from the Aston Martin, so that's a, that's a beautiful touch there. Uh, no, I haven't got the cable hooked up, so it doesn't actually open the door yet. Um, but yeah, I just love those. Um, yeah, and the gap. I managed to get this gap exactly six mil, so I'm fairly happy with that. I know that you know when you do your um, you know your priming and your, and your painting and whatnot, that that gap will close slightly. But I'm going to be sanding it in between coats anyway. Um, if it ends up being 5 mil, then I'll be happy. Um, what else? The, um, the way the door opens and closes is just beautiful. I, I love it. It sounds different to a normal coupe. I think normal coupe or a normal Falcon has maybe more of a mechanical sound, which I do like. But these, because this has got the Mustang latch, um, it has a lot of plastic components in the latch. Um, you can't really see it from there, but yeah, it, it's kind of like has a, a it feels like it's a plastic um, latch. It's a steel striker, but a plastic latch. I still have to do filling and stuff inside the, the B pillar, um, but that's all fine. There won't be much work involved there. The gap on the back of the door is it's fairly even. I, I'm going to um, I need to address a little bit there. It's a little bit open, but I'll just be adding a bit of filler on the B pillar. You know, we're only talking a mil or two, max, so. Um, back quarters looking okay. I did already put a bit of filler in this. Um, it's, there's a bit in it, it's not too much. And I would say that it's not perfect yet, um, but it's, you know, it's roughed in. And um, that was, I, I worked that filler with some 80 grit and then went to 120 and then 180 grit. And then I primed it after 180. Uh, what else? Well, the back is, you know, as it was before, it's in, it's in epoxy. Um, one more thing though is the, uh, the boot lid. You have a look at that boot lid, that's, that's in shocking condition. And I was going to fix that boot lid, I was going to uh, repair the skin, but I managed to, um, uh, uh, managed to get a, um, a a skin uh, from a place in, um, I think it's South Australia. Let me just double check. All right, okay, so I just had to get my facts straight. So, managed to get this uh, boot skin here from a place called Southern Classics and Customs in Adelaide. Um, and the bloke's name's Adam van der Linden. And uh, yeah, it looks like a pretty nice piece of work. So, looking forward to fitting that. Um, that'll be in an upcoming ed episode, but uh, That'll address the, the, the boot. Um, what else is there? The bonnet, um, at the moment, I've found that with this final fitting, uh, that my bonnet is not correct, and I'm going to have to widen it at the top, which is a little bit annoying, because originally I knew I had to widen the front of it, because this being a Mac 1 Mustang bonnet, is slightly narrower at the front. And so I ended up adding a, a, um, a piece of 20mm uh, wide um, flat bar along the side and welded it up and um, trimmed the edges off it. But uh, that was the way the car was fitted before and now it's fitting differently. So anyway, that's not a big issue. Um, we'll go ahead and we'll get that widened up. So that'll be the boot and the bonnet addressed. And um, yeah, at that point, the bodywork is pretty much done. Sorry, metalwork is pretty much done. There will be plenty of bodywork, so 
Um, but anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed that episode, guys. Um, I am getting into this coupe a lot more now. Um, so I'm going to be wavering between the coupe and the, and the sedan for the time being. Um, still got a few more parts I'm waiting for the Chevy on. So it's one of those things where I kind of do, I guess, what takes my fancy. And I might get a, you know, a hankering to work on, on the coupe. And then I'll just sort of get into that and, you know, get really passionate about it for a while. And so on and so forth but I'd say out of all of the cars the coupe is my biggest passion so I'm really enjoying the way it's going and um, I'm just loving the way it's turning out so I hope you guys are enjoying it too so anyway thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next episode